Welcome to the Success Sensei Podcast for anyone interested in success, happiness, and balance. We'll teach you how to be a black belt at life. And now, your host, former professional fighter, multiple world champion, entrepreneur, and investor, Robert Devan. Bowing in. This is Robert Devan, the Success Sensei, helping you to win at life one kick and punch at a time. Episode 308. Five lessons from 2022 that will improve your 2023. It's the Success Sensei Podcast main event. Five lessons from 2022 that will improve your 2023. Yes, I know this episode goes out and we haven't had Christmas yet. And we're specifically talking about improving and building upon this year when we haven't gotten to the new year yet. But now is the time to do it because what most people do is they concentrate on Christmas first. Then there's a couple of days after Christmas and you might get a chance to do it then, but more than likely you won't. You'll be, you'll kind of have a break. It'll be your only opportunity to have a break before the new year. And then the, the new year suddenly starts and you can feel like you're on the back foot. You mightn't have your plan in place. You mightn't have reviewed the year. And once the year starts, it's very hard to do those things because you're trying to get ahead. You're trying to get started. Kids might be back in school. You're back to work. Everything is happening. So to, to review your previous year while you're in a current new year trying to get started is a hard thing to do. So I like to do it early. I like to do it in December, early December. And I'm recommending that you do the same as well before things get too crazy, before family um, involvement at Christmas time, before festivities, before all the things that you're supposed to be doing during Christmas and as well as having the, the downtime. It's important to take the few moments and to think about how your year went and to approve upon it for the next year. Otherwise, you're just going to end up doing the same thing over and over again. Now, a lot of people I'm talking to, they won't be sorry to see the back of 2022. I think it was a difficult year for many different reasons and for many people. There are lessons from the hardships as well as from the wins that can be brought forward. Once you analyze both and obviously you try to get rid of any weaknesses and any hardship and improve upon any wins and any achievements. And that's specifically what we're talking about here. If you've had a hard 2022, then absolutely look forward with positivity to 2023. These are five simple lessons. Now remember, simple isn't always easy to continue to to do con on a consistent basis. But if you concentrate these five lessons from 2022, I guarantee you will have a more improved 2023. And that will be brilliant, especially if you can repeat that process year on year. So let's get into these points and let's figure all this out. Okay, number one, be more productive. Be more productive this year. Maybe you don't like the sound of that, be more productive. How could you do more? Well, it's like this. The time will pass either way. So here we are at the end of 2022. If you were setting your goals in 2021, you probably weren't imagining that you're actually here at the end of 2022. So if you were setting your goals out in December 2021, or you weren't even setting out goals, you were just thinking, I wonder what it will be like. I wonder, you couldn't have possibly thought emotionally to the point that you're at right now. The time will pass either way. So unless you've got structured goals, structured plans, unless you're productive, you're not going to be making the best use of your time. Whether you choose to be successful or not, the year is going to go by. Now, what the hell does that mean, whether you choose to be successful or not? Surely we all choose to be successful, and that's a ridiculous statement. Well, not really, because you might not choose to be as productive as you possibly can be, and that is success in and of itself, especially if that productivity, productivity produces results. Now, you've heard me say, productivity and productive and you probably automatically thought I meant for your boss or for your job but you can be productive 
for yourself, on yourself and for yourself and for your own projects. So the time is going to pass whether you choose to be productive for yourself or not. Those 12 months add up fast. The hours, the days, the weeks, the months, and suddenly it's a year. Anyone that's a little bit older, suddenly it's a decade gone. And it's all the little decisions, all the productive choices that you made and all the productive choices that you neglected to make that add up your year. In 12 months time, I guarantee you, you will be delighted with your achievements. You'll be delighted that you took on and overcame the hard tasks early. So don't put them off. Don't procrastinate. In one year's time, you could be sitting here, standing here, driving, however you listen to this podcast, happy with everything that you achieved. Now, if you are happy with everything now, brilliant, continue to do so and improve upon it. If you're frustrated or dissatisfied or felt that you could have done more, then absolutely put that energy into being more productive in 2023. And that word productive, as I said, means many things to many people. I didn't say work your body into the ground, work your mind into the ground. Be productive on yourself and your own projects as well as everything else. Right. Number two, don't be reactionary. So number one, two, and three points are going to kind of intertwine. So number one was be more productive. This is don't be reactionary. So to be more productive, you can't be reactionary. Now, all of this year, all of the last few years, actually, we've been programmed, we've been brainwashed to wait to see what's going to happen, to wait for the news, to declare COVID, wars, crisis, recessions. So many people are afraid to take action, afraid to live, waiting to see what's going to happen, waiting to see and to hear and to watch the reality that's being presented to them. False reality, because I guarantee that it actually doesn't affect your day to day life. Your mood can be swayed so easily by societal morale. Societal morale can be greatly affected by media. And what sells dramatic, sensationalist news sells. And to think that you can surround yourself with this type of news and it not affect your mindset is a complete falsehood. Take action. Take control. Do not focus on can't. Focus on what you can do. There's no time to be reactionary. There's no time to be a consumer. You need to be creating. You need to be taking action. You need to be living your life, essentially. Which leads us nicely on to number three. Improve your plans. Maybe you have plans written down. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've set your goals. Maybe you haven't. Either way, you need to do it and revisit and recheck and look at those goals with a different type of mindset. You need to set out goals for your health. You need to set out goals and plans for your wealth and for your happiness. We're talking about shaping and planning specifically your inner world as well as your outer world. And yes, we are talking about possessions that you might want, experiences that you might want to experience, and routines that you'd like to have. In other words, a lifestyle. So to be to get anywhere, to get to the destination that you want to get to, first of all, you have to know where you want to get. First of all, you have to really think about your goals and really set your plans. The more you improve your plans for this year, the better chances you will have to succeed and to be more successful. Remember, if you've always, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. It's time now at this stage coming into 2023 with no restrictions to really go for it, to really take a step forward and, and be more productive, 
Don't be so reactionary and improve your plans. Which brings us on to number four. Build financial confidence. Life will continue to become more expensive. I'm sorry to drop that bomb. You know it. I know it. Life is going to continue to cost more and more money as currency um you know, de depletes due to inflation, fast inflation, um, as things go cashless, um, as cost of supplies, everything, everything is going to make, I forgot to mention, excessive, ever-increasing tax. The bane of my life, life will continue to become more expensive. You will continue to experience and suffer financial anxiety that sounds very negative and very horrible and it is but it should spur you on to do three things or certainly to think about three things number one make more money number two save more money and number three invest more money yes i know it's easier said than done but even getting into the mindset of thinking about how could you make a bit more money? Walk, well, small money can turn into big money. Do not underestimate or turn your nose up at small money. Small money becomes bigger money. And then save that small money and then invest that small money and it will become even bigger money. Because you're never going to have enough. You're never, especially in these times, unless you're getting to the heady heights of billions upon billions, and then you're going to have a whole world of different problems, that if you were at that point, you, you, you wouldn't necessarily want and you mightn't want to trade that position. But back to, back to this, make more money, save more money, invest more money. Try to get some type of financial security in an ever-rising financial anxiety marketplace right now and going into 2023. There is so many calls for, you know, a bad recession coming. The energy crisis, the cost of housing crisis, rental and, and you know, the price of housing, the shortages, supply issues everything fuel shortages fuel crisis there's there's that much anxiety and it and it does whether you like it or not whether you you know think of yourself as being money orientated or not it all boils down to money having more money gives you more confidence having a blanket a security blanket some type of we're not saying millions upon millions but having some type of financial confidence, or certainly more than you're at now, will absolutely give you a hell of a lot more confidence going into 2023. And it will make you less susceptible to all the negativity and all the sensationalist news that we talked about um, earlier on in point number two. Not Don't be reactionary. So that was build financial confidence confidence because it affects everything whether you like it or not money affects everything having the time and the ability not to spend money costs money so you need to have money to be able to choose not to spend it and to have the freedom to be able to spend the time doing things that don't cost money anyway number five nurture healthier relationships so doing all these things as a lone wolf might not lead to long-term happiness so being more productive don't be reactionary improve your plans build financial confidence doing all of that alone you know maybe for a while you might enjoy it but really you you need other people no person is an island. We are all connected. If that didn't become clear to you during the lockdown and regulations, when we, we craved human interaction, whether we're good at it or not, whether you, we suffer, all of us, from some type of social anxiety or not, we still need other people. 
You don't need negative people. You don't need dickheads. You need people, obviously, that you get on with, that make you feel good, and you make them feel good. And this is something that you actually have to work on. When I say nurture healthier relationships, I'm not just talking about your existing relationships. We're also talking about new relationships. I'm not necessarily talking about love relationships. I'm talking about friendships. I'm talking about, you know, peers having healthy work relationships as well, but absolutely friendships. It seems to be harder and harder for people to connect with fellow human beings these days. And that's a dying skill and it's a dying art. And the funny thing is, it's actually so easy to do. It just takes, you know, an interest in somebody or, or a simple question or comment about you know, your environment, anything to suddenly break the ice and to see the person light up when you really thought that their resting face was very off-putting for you to connect with. So then you don't bother and we become more cold and more isolated. But you, me, all of us, we need others as well as the people uh, in our lives. And they need you. So you need to get that into your head as well. We're not talking about using people. We're not talking about you need others to get ahead, to network, anything like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about happiness and fulfillment in life. You need others and they need you. Don't neglect that part. Don't beat yourself down and think that you don't provide any valuable to have any any value to relationships because of course you do. And that's an absolutely awful thought to be drilling into your head. You need relationships. You need love in your life. There's many different types of love. I'm not going to steer it one way or the other. You need a healthy and healthier relationships with others. But now here's the thing. You need a healthier relationship with yourself. That's something that you're going to have to work on. So even though this is called nurture healthier relationships, we are talking about nurturing a healthier relationship with yourself as well as others and the only way to do that is get yourself to a position where you accept you understand and you like accept yourself and then you can love yourself without guilt without chastising yourself without any other negative mindsets or self-loathing that you might be constantly um, repeating in the back of your mind. Do not let yourself away with that. Get yourself to improve your relationship with yourself, whether it's, you know, it, it generally boils down to what your vices are and trying to improve upon them. So improving your relationship with food, improving your relationship with your own body, improving your relationship to any uh, addictions that you may have. And remember, there's, I'm, I'm not just immediately thinking about the worst addictions, drugs. We're talking about coffee. We're talking about video games. We're talking about anything that might be, you know, you overly concentrate on that is affecting you from and, and preventing you from being able to even simply like yourself. There's a lot of people that do not like themselves. And that's a basic, really, Everybody should love themselves. And if they did, it's easier then to share that love with other people and the world would be such a happier place. But people can't even get to the position of liking themselves. So that makes it very hard then to connect with others and like others or, or indeed love each other and, and vice versa, have them like and love you as well. It is actually something, it's not, relationships aren't stuff that just happens. It actually uh, they actually are are, are um, things that you have to actively work on and actively think about. So nurture healthier relationships. Right, let's go through those five again so that you're absolutely bulletproof for 2023. We won't complicate it. There's only five. I could have added 10. I could have added 20 or 100. Let's stick with these five. You might have your own as I'm, as I'm calling these out. and I'd absolutely love to hear them. But number one, be more productive in 2023 on yourself, on your own projects, not just productive for other people. Be more productive is number one. Number two, don't be reactionary. Number three, improve your plans. Number four, build financial confidence. And number five, nurture healthier relationships. If you have a think about each of these, if you need to re-listen to the episode, absolutely. If you need to write notes, if you need to follow that train of thought yourself, Come up with your own plans. 
Think about each one of those points and how they affect you and what you could do to move forward. I guarantee you, if you do that, you will have a completely different year to the this this year and previous years. You might completely invent reinvent yourself, and um, you might r- drastically improve things going forward, like like ripples in the water, like a little pebble can have a massive effect and it can just keep expanding and compounding. So you don't know what little changes and what little mindset you instigate in your mind. You don't know what um, is going to happen. You don't know how that's going to permeate. You don't know the positive consequences that could occur as a result of, of these changes and these mindsets that we're talking about. So don't dismiss it. Have a think about it. If you need to take a few minutes to yourself and close your eyes and meditate and visualize how you wish to be living your life, what kind of a lifestyle would be your perfect lifestyle, how as a person you want to feel, how you want to interact with the rest of the world, the things that you want to experience, the things that you want to have, how your perfect life for you, not for others, don't be afraid to get a very clear um, version of that in in your in through visualization, through meditation, just closing your eyes and having to think about it. It will greatly help when you're writing your goals. Right. I absolutely think that's enough. And I would absolutely love a like, a follow, a comment. And even more than that, I would absolutely love some feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Message me anytime. The success sensei.com. Thank you for listening. I'm Robert Devan, the success sensei. Life is a fight you can enjoy and win. Bowing out. This has been the Success Sensei, fighting the winning fight. So add us, subscribe, like, and comment. Keep those hands up and keep moving forward.